Thompson recently has been spamming a lot of Centaur mid. Sounds crazy, right? But this is Thompson we're talking about, so it's quite normal. He currently has an 80% win rate in his last 10 games. In this video, I will show you guys how you can copy what he's doing and gain MMR in your pubs. Every part of this video is equally important, so don't skip anything. Centaur is viable as a mid laner for several reasons. He has a high base damage and coupled with his great attack animation, he can deny creeps easily, which is significantly impactful in the mid lane. Thanks to his spells, he's very tanky and can pretty much out harass anything. With Stampede, he can gank other lanes and also provide support globally to his teammates. Besides that, the hero has high damage spells that can be used to push in waves easily. For his starting items, Thompson has two variations. The most common one is a double ring of protection, triple branch, and a set of tangos. Centaur has a base armor of 0.5, which is really bad and makes him an easy target to harass with physical attacks. In the mid lane, the enemy will always be right clicking him and to sustain himself against this, Thompson goes for the double ring of protection which provides him with 4 armor. The branches give him stats and he can use them to eat tangos for double the duration. He does not go for a quelling blade in any of his builds because Centaur inherently has a very high base damage. The other build that Thompson goes for is a magic wand and triple branches. He goes for this build when he's against a matchup that will not be right clicking him but will constantly be using their spells. The biggest examples are Timbersaw and Bat Rider. Both these heroes will never right click you but will constantly spam their spells. The magic wand charges from the spell casting allow Thompson to sustain himself in such matchups. These matchups are really hard for Centaur and buying the right early items is crucial. Thompson always prioritizes fighting for bounty runes. Centaur has an AoE stun which can be very useful in the rune fights and can lead to a kill which can give him a head start in terms of experience and gold. With that being said, this means that Thompson does not block his creeps from the get go. In the laning phase, he's mostly aggressive because this is Thompson we are talking about. His aggressiveness and playstyle differ based on the kind of hero he is playing against. To simplify it, he has different playstyles against a ranged hero and a melee hero. If he is against a melee hero, he tends to right click them a lot with his high base damage. Thompson always uses his stomp in a way that he secures a creep and gets a right click on the enemy. As discussed before, Centaur has a high base damage which can be used to deny a lot of creeps and Thompson tends to deny a lot of creeps by taking advantage of that. Once he gets a point in his double edge, he uses his stomp and double edge off cooldown whenever he gets a chance on the enemy. All this harass keeps the enemy hero at low HP which eventually leads to a kill. Against ranged heroes, he plays technically the same but there's a twist. It's very hard to just walk up to ranged heroes and right click them. So what Thompson does is that he tends to only right click them after using Hoof Stomp. Since Hoof Stomp allows you to move while casting it, it is easy to land if the ranged hero is slightly out of position. Other than that, it's pretty much the same playstyle as against the melee heroes. The only difference is the right clicks. For his lane item build, he goes for bottle first. The reason is that since he will be spamming hoof stomp and double edge, he will lose HP and mana. Having a bottle helps him sustain, which means more constant harass on the enemy. Thanks to water runes, he has a guaranteed way to refill the bottle every time. After getting bottle, he always gets boosts of speed. Boosts of speed help in walking to his opponent and pressing his button so it's crucial to buy them right after bottle. After boots, if he's not against a hero that will be spamming a lot of spells, he upgrades the boots to phase boots and then buys a magic wand. If he's against a hero that will be spamming a lot of spells, he buys the magic wand before upgrading boots into phase boots. After that, he gets a win lace. This 250 gold investment is very important because phase boot active gives you a percentage increase in movement speed, and movement speed is king on centaur as explained before. For his skill build in the lane, it's pretty simple. He maxes his hoof stomp first, followed by double edge. He does not put any points in retaliate. He takes stampede at level 6. Thompson pretty much never rotates to the side lanes. He focuses on pressuring the mid lane as much as possible. Since he owns most of his lanes, his pressure forces the enemy to react and when that happens, it automatically creates a lot of chaos in the mid lane. Even after getting the enemy mid tower, Thompson still stays around the mid lane, pushing waves in and farming the side camps in the enemy jungle. This constantly exerts pressure on the enemy tier 2 which forces the enemy to react to it, leaving the side lanes free for his team and he also gets to farm a lot. Thompson always opts for the Eternal Shroud as his first big item. Eternal Shroud was recently buffed in 7.35 and heroes like Centaur greatly benefit from it. The components of Eternal Shroud are all great to buy on Centaur and he gets value from all of them even before they're combined into Eternal Shroud. 
that's the first benefit of the item. Eternal Shroud gives 300 HP, 25% base magic resistance, and 14 strength. Other than that, the passive gives more magic resistance based on how much damage is taken by spells. Centaur's Double Edge deals extra percentage damage based on Centaur's strength. The plus 14 strength from the Eternal Shroud allows Centaur to deal more damage with his Double Edge, which means faster farming and more damage output in fights. Besides that, the magic resistance makes it so that every time you cast Double Edge as Centaur, you take less self damage from it. Usually, Blink is the item that people would think should be bought on Centaur for initiation, but the thing about Eternal Shroud is that it makes Centaur so tanky, and 12 to 15 minutes into the game, he can only die if there are multiple heroes. Eternal Shroud allows Thompson to play the map aggressively, resulting in immense pressure throughout the map. Blink is an item that requires follow up as Centaur alone cannot burst heroes in a single stun. Every video takes a lot of effort, and I want to keep helping you guys by making quality content. If you are enjoying the video, please make sure to like and comment your thoughts about the video, as it helps with the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe. In terms of playing the map and farming, Topson farms a lot. You must be thinking that by farming a lot, I mean that he just hits creep wherever he sees them, but that is not the case. Topson only takes dangerous farm from the map or if a lane is heavily pushed in. He plays on the enemy side of the map and farms their camps whilst pushing lanes. This creates pressure on the map and then the enemy reacts to what he is doing and when that happens it usually turns out to be good for Topson if his team follows up. With Eternal Shroud it is very hard to bring down a centaur unless you have high physical damage. Topson takes advantage of his timing and makes sure that he gets the most out of it. The key thing to understand here is that when you play Centaur mid, you shouldn't mindlessly roam around the map but rather play an enemy area aggressively where you can also get to farm a lot. After getting Eternal Shroud, Topson buys Blink Dagger and then chooses between BKB or Aghanims. Blink Dagger is always good on Centaur as it allows him to initiate. Blink combined with Stampede allows Centaur to have great reach and after Eternal Shroud it's fine to buy it as by then you are already scaling well. After Blink he decides between either BKB or Aghanims. If he's against a lineup where they have a lot of lockdown or a lot of spell damage then he opts for BKB over Aghanims. Some examples are Overgrowth, Root in general and Timbersaw who has pure damage. Centaur without mobility is not a great hero and if the enemy has ways to stop you from being mobile in fights, BKB is a good buy. If there aren't that many ways to stop Topson from moving around and killing him, he opts for Aghanims. You must be wondering that why does he go for Ags as Centaur mid when that item is for saving people? Well, that's where you are wrong. Centaur's Ags also gives him Stampede. It has a cooldown of 24 seconds and a duration of 8 seconds. The way Topson uses his Ags is that he uses it to farm waves combined with Double Edge. Besides that, it is very useful to go in and out of fights thanks to the short cooldown. Lastly, it can also be used to save people but that's really how he uses it. He goes for Aghanims every game, which tells you how highly he thinks of, his, of this item. If he goes for Ags first, he buys BKB afterwards and vice versa. For his neutral items, he always prefers getting something that will give him HP regen. For tier 1, his first choice is safety bubble which provides him with 5 HP regen and 100 HP barrier. After that, it's between royal jelly and seeds of serenity, as both these items provide him with HP regen. For tier 2 items, his first choice is the light collector. It gives him 12 HP regen at daytime and 6 mana regen at night. Other than that, it also provides a 10% movement speed increase. As talked about before, mobility is king on centaur, besides that he prefers dragon scale which gives him armor plus HP regen or bullwhip which gives him movement speed, HP and mana regen. If he doesn't get any of these, he usually prefers Gossamer Cape for the movement speed and first hit evasion. The reason behind him preferring HP regen is because he will constantly lose HP every time he uses double edge to farm or fight, so it's crucial for him to have the HP regen. For tier 3 item, he prefers getting the Ogre Seal Totem. It provides him with plus 10 strength which benefits Centaur and then the ability to run away from bad situations. Imagine having double stampede and another way to get out, not to mention Blink Dagger. That's a lot of mobility. After getting his BKB and Axe, Topson mostly opts for Octarine, Overwhelming Blink and his Shard. Octarine not only makes Centaur immensely tankier with the plus 625 HP, but it also gives 25% cooldown reduction. This allows Topson to constantly use his double edge in fights and deal a lot of damage. Besides that, it makes the cooldown of Hitcher Ride from 24 seconds to 18 seconds. All of Centaur's spells have a pretty low cooldown, and Octarine makes it even lower. Imagine a hero who is so tanky and is just spamming spells continuously. How do you deal with that? Overwhelming Blink is self-explanatory. 
More strength for the centaur means more tankiness and damage from the double edge. Centaur's shard allows double edge to slow down targets and increases centaur's strength by 15% per hero hit and has up to 5 stacks. With Octarine, it is very easy to accumulate these stacks and deal insane damage in fights whilst being super tanky. For his overall skill build, Thompson maxes his hoof stomp first, followed by double edge, and then retaliate. He takes Stampede at level 6, 12, and 18. For his talents, at level 10, he opts for the HP region over the movement speed as he needs to sustain himself from all the damage that he will take from using double edge non-stop. At level 15, he prefers the plus 15 strength over the double edge damage increase. Having extra strength automatically increases the damage of double edge whilst also making centaur tankier so it's better. At level 20, he takes the stampede cooldown reduction talent. He usually has Octrine by this point and the cooldown reductions combined allow him to use Stampede multiple times in slightly longer fights. Retaliate damage is not useful as his entire build revolves around mobility and dealing damage through spells. At level 25, he prefers having the Hoof Stomp stun duration increase over the Retaliate Aura. This makes Hoof Stomp a 3 second stun and in the late game, in 3 seconds you can blow up any hero with your team. Also the fact that he will be having Octarine so he will be using it a lot. When it comes to team fighting, Thompson uses his bling to initiate with Hoof Stomp. At the same time, he uses his axe to slow down and deal damage to his opponents. After that, he judges the situation and then if it seems bad, he repositions himself by either using his BKB or Ogre Seal Thorum to run away. Usually, by this time, thanks to Octarine, Hitcherite is off cooldown and can be used again. Thompson uses it to run away. The whole idea of teamfighting as Centaur is to go back and forth. Go in with your initial initiation, use Hoof Stomp, Double Edge, Hitch a Ride and Stampede and burst one hero down and then get out. After that, wait for your spells to go off cooldown again because you have Octarine and then reinitiate. Centaur does not right click heroes. He uses spell, treat him like a spell caster. There is no set way to copy the way Thompson fights. But with this information, you should be able to be creative and take fights smartly. Remember that you have low cooldown spells and use them better. The playstyle is somewhat similar to Puck, but Centaur can be manly if required, whereas Puck is Omega elusive. If you wish to improve your gameplay on any role significantly, I offer private coaching lessons which can help you reach higher ranks as they have for other students. If you are interested, limited slots are open for January which can be found on my discord linked in the description. Please make sure to subscribe and like the video for more high quality content like this. Other than that, I stream on Twitch which can also be found in the description. Do let me know in the comments if you have any feedback. Otherwise, have a nice day and good luck with your games.